Hello and welcome to this quick informational session regarding the upcoming biostatistics test. This examination will happen on uh, Thursday, February 23, and um, you are invited as a team to create a summary sheet um, regarding the material that you'd like to have accessible to yourself um, during the exam. So in this video, I'd like to go over some of the details about that summary sheet and about the test itself. So if you were to go to your home page and then um, scroll down to one of the save the date, you'll notice here that the first one has to do with the exam that's on February 23rd. And specifically the link that this takes you to the T13 Biostat test summary sheet, um, this gives you information because um, you're not able to access the actual quiz in Canvas until the day of, until it becomes available. So we put all of the information here as well. So this gives you information about the test um, in terms of when it will begin, um, how you will complete it, what to expect on it. And um, it also talks a bit about the summary sheet and you are encouraged as a team to create a summary sh sheet together. The sheet is due the summary sheet is due on February 16 at 11 p.m. And so your team will need to create whatever information you'd like to have by then um, and, and submit that. So please keep in mind that the value of the summary sheet is in creating it. If a super smart person were to create one for you that hypothetically included all the information on there, it really wouldn't be valuable to you on the exam because you wouldn't have created it yourself. So be sure and put some time into that if statistics, especially if biostatistics is a challenging topic for you. So contribute to that rather than just depending on, on others to create something. Um, this also details how to pass the exam. There are a variety of different ways. You pass or fail as a team and probably the most common uh, way that teams will pass is that you will prepare a summary sheet and all teammates will score a B or an 83% or better on the exam. Now if that doesn't happen then um, just by creating the summary sheet that gets you the option of any of your teammates who didn't score a B or better to work with the instructor, which is me, um, to remediate to a B or better. But by what, what I mean by remediate just simply means that we'll work on some of the questions that you missed and I'll give you an assignment that you will work on and turn in to me so that you um, achieve at least that grade of a B. So in answering enough questions correctly to get to a B. And that may be um, somewhat time consuming, but I really do want you to understand the material behind the test. The last two things on this particular page include um, some options for review. And um, the content that we are going to include, we are trying to model it after the content in the CPH exam content outline under biostatistics. And there's a link that takes you directly there, um, right here on this page and it takes you to something that looks like this, the Certified in Public Health Exam Content Outline. And we'll come back to this in a minute. I also wanted to show you that there's a review video um, at the CPH Study Session Webinars under Biostatistics, and it's at this page right here. That there's a link that will take you there. And what that looks like is each year since they've um, started giving the CPH exam, I think it actually started a couple of years later, but um, each year they create a webinar on the main topic areas. So here you see behavioral and social sciences, biostatistics, the cross-cutting areas is it new as of the last couple of years for them to cover some of those, environmental health, epidemiology, and health policy and management. So you can see the newest webinar. They are two to three hours each for each topic. Um, and very informational. You can also download just the presentation PDF if you want to follow along while you're watching the webinar. And I would say this is a very, very good way of kind of getting insight into what they feel like is important for the exam. So let's look re really quickly here at the CPH exam content outline. If you scroll down to the third page of the document, what you will find is a table of contents. And in this middle section, what you see are those five primary areas. 
um, biostatistics, health policy and management, environmental health sciences, epidemiology, and social behavioral sciences. And you'll notice that each of those five are 15% of that CPH exam, so they're given equal weight. Since the exam is 200 questions, um, that means that there are 30 questions for each of these sections. Um, so they're, they're balanced out roughly equally. And then under general principles, there are 12.5% and 12.5% cross-cutting. So in those kind of more general areas, that ends up being one-fourth of the exam. The other, the other five are three-quarters of the exam. So let's go ahead and take a look just at this biostatistics section. We're going to scroll down. And I'll go through exactly what kinds of things you should be thinking about when you're studying for the exam that we're going to be having, and then also for the CPH exam later. Under visualizing data, this is really all about um, graphs. And you've created a variety of different graphs. Um, data presentation includes the concepts of histograms and bar charts and pie graphs. And when would be the best situation to create different kinds of things like that? And then simple linear regression lines is, is where we're looking at more of a, a regression between two variables. And so that would be the line of least fit. We are not going to cover Kaplan-Meier because we haven't covered that topic in fall and winter. So you can skip over that one. Under descriptive statistics, these are some of the main things. Central tendency, variability, frequency. Remember the mean and standard deviation, median, um, range, n and percent. Those kinds of things are captured in this um, section. Now, percentiles and standardized scores are some of the things that scare people quite a bit. And they are more detail-oriented. And they're really, really tempting to write questions about for those people who write the test questions. So think about that normal distribution and what those standardized z-scores mean. What does it mean to be um, two standard deviations below the mean, to, like a z-score of negative 2? Um, and so those are the kinds of application type questions that they will want to ask you. Under the probability distributions, we've looked at the normal or the z distribution. We also look to see about the t distribution, how it how that is just a modification of the z distribution for a sample size less than infinity, which is typically the case. And then how that t distribution mo is modified to become the f distribution. Um, we also looked at these three middle ones, and the chi-square being the much more common one that we would be interested in knowing about or using in statistics, but then also understanding binomial and Poisson. OK, so in terms of types of variables and measurement scales, qualitative versus quantitative variables is a different question than qualitative versus quantitative analysis or research methods. When they're talking about qualitative versus quantitative variables, what they're really getting at is, are they categorical? Um, in terms of nominal or ordinal or dichotomous? Or are they quantitative, what we've called scale in our particular sense? Now, um, qualitative versus quantitative analysis really has to do with something um, much more fundamental about how the research was conducted. And so that can get really confusing because we use those those terms in a variety of different ways. Um, confounding is, is that time when we add other variables to the model and um, we um, then are accounting for something else that's contributing or confounding that relationship. Um, we're going to skip over effect modifiers for now. Um, also, in terms of thinking about independent versus dependent variables, this really gets to the idea that usually, um, or often I should say, maybe not usually, but often there are certain factors that lead to um, the development of something that is your outcome variable. Specifically in statistics, we're not thinking as much about causation, um, but independent um, would be that x variable the one that is the predictor or the exposure often. And the dependent variable is the outcome or the disease or whatever it is that we're thinking is dependent on whether a person had exposure to that independent variable. Um, in terms of measurement scales, this really has to do with the nominal ordinal scale that we have discussed. But a lot of times, the terminology for that will be different. Somebody may call it a continuous variable. Um, somebody may use the term dichotomous for a 
a nominal variable with only two categories. So just be familiar with a variety of different types of um, ways of calling things along that measurement scale. And then also sort of what that means. Um, the measurement scale is really important to understand to be able to look at a variable and say, well, I think that's an ordinal variable in order to be able to pick the right test. Um, in terms of reliability and validity, I've covered this more under the epidemiology and biostatistics part of the, um, of the material, so we won't be including that on the test that we give. Um, in terms of estimation, um, sampling theory and central limit theorem. This had to do with last quarter really talking about the idea of taking conceptually, we, we never do this, the we never do this um, scenario, um, taking multiple samples from our population and seeing what happens um, to the distribution of the means that we're collecting and that kind of thing. And then also estimation of population parameters, that whole idea that really what we're doing is we're taking a sample, but then we need to go back and then um, say whether the parameters that we calculate, or the statistics that we calculated for our sample um, can be applied as parameters to the population. Hypothesis testing is a pretty straightforward section, although there are multiple hypotheses that we can test, and it depends on the types of tests that we're doing. But the concepts of hypothesis testing um, are important to kind of keep track of. And then in terms of uh, probability, the statistical test assumptions and their importance there, um, the levels of significance where we call our p-value is equal to this or greater than that or less than something else. Also, um, making decision errors. Remember how we had type 1 and type 2 out errors and what happens to power as you're, as you're um, going through that particular process. The next three really talk about some of the main tests that we focused in on. Um, the tests of group means, we talked about several different t-tests, um, the one-way ANOVA, tests of proportion have to do with chi-square test of independence, and then the goodness of fit chi-square. Um, in terms of odds ratio and relative risk, also again, I've included that with your epidemiology uh, material, and so we will not be including that in this particular exam. And then in terms of correlation and prediction, this is really just an extension of the, um, the t-tests in one way ANOVA that we were talking about before in terms of correlation and simple linear, linear regression. Um, we have those hypotheses that we're testing between just two variables, and then we expand that that to include possibly confounders or additional variables that we want to include in the model for multiple linear regression. Um, that would have a scale outcome variable, and for logistic regression, that would have a dichotomous outcome variable. We did not cover survival analysis, so we won't be covering that. Um, the interpreting the statistical test results is probably a pretty big section. And so a lot of times they want to know, when you go out into being a, a public health practitioner, can you look at a study? Can you look at some results from an analysis and correctly interpret what those mean? Um, and then in terms of confidence intervals, that's it's an interesting way they decided to spell that here. So confidence intervals, what, what exactly do those 95% confidence intervals mean? I would say this is kind of interpreting those confidence intervals. Um, none of the stuff on the exam will ask you to perform these complex calculations, um, even with a very small data set. The only exception to that would be is if they gave you a few numbers, they would they would po might possibly want to know if you can calculate the mean, median, and mode of a set of maybe eight or ten numbers. So you will have access to a calculator. Um, it'll probably be less important than it would have been on an epidemiology sectional exam like this. Um, with epidemiology, there's a lot of stuff that we calculate kind of by hand in terms of relative risks and odds ratios and that sort of thing, but we are not including those for this particular exam. So I hope that is very helpful to you in terms of thinking about the kinds of things um, that you'll want to review and possibly to include on your study session. The last thing that I want to mention um, is that the PCOR TAs um, hold, actually they, they do this every Sunday, they have kind of office hours that um, if you're here, if you're available, you're welcome to come and ask any questions that you have. Maybe you've been studying along and want to have some clarification on certain things. They also will be planning a little bit more formal um, review session on one of the Sunday afternoons coming up. 
Um, I imagine it would be very similar to the webinar, so if it's more convenient for you to just watch the webinar, um, you just wouldn't be able to ask questions. So if you choose that option and you have some questions that you'd like to ask, just jot them down and send them our way and we're very happy to answer them for you. So thank you for joining me for this short um, video to help organize your thoughts about the biostatistics test that's coming up. And um, good luck studying for the test.